Hallo, herzlich willkommen zu unserem äh, diesjährigen Panel zum Thema Serie. First of all, um, is there anybody who does not understand German? Yes. Okay, I will do this in English and the panel will be held in English anyway because we have a, a guest from Sweden. So I'm happy to have you here for our uh, <coughs> panel this year. I'm very happy that we uh, are doing this in cooperation with the German Film Institute, Deutsches Film Institute in Frankfurt. And um, the moderator of the panel, David Kleinges, uh, he is uh, supporting us very much and he will present the guests we have uh, today. Um, I just wanted to tell you that for those who couldn't make it to the screening of the films of Martin Nielsen and Thomas Moore uh, right before the screening, there will be Uh, possibilities to, to watch the films. Um, Gedankenstriche Hanne Darboven by Thomas Mohr will be tonight at 7.30 p.m. in the Lichtmess Theater and on Saturday on 7.45 here in the No Budget Hotel because it's uh, in the No Budget Program. And we are different now by Morten Nielsen is in the international competition and you will have the opportunity to watch it tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the evening in the 3001 cinema and on Saturday at six, at 5.30 in the studio kino in San Paulo. So now I hand over to David Kleines and I wish you an interesting um, discussion. Oh. Good, thank you. Um, yes, uh, welcome and, uh, to the panel which we have titled Continue Repetition and Variation The serial principle. Um, as you see, this is a very broad subject, and um, I think we have assembled quite a panel, um, which allows us allows us to to view uh, the idea of series or the concept of series um, in visual art, but also in other art forms from very different viewpoints. And um, I think we have um, a lot of questions, which. Um, come up uh, unintentionally and, and, and intentionally when we talk about series and um, what constitutes a series, um, where do we find series um, and um, how do we work with it as an artist, how do we, how do we uh, perceive it as a consumer, um, how does it constitute um, our concepts of, uh, of certain epochs or certain bodies of work And this is uh, just a glimpse of the range uh, of topics we might touch. Um, we only have one and a half hours time. So um, I'd like to start off by introducing uh, our panelists for today. And I'm starting off on the left with um, Christina Bettler. Um, she's a professor and managing director um, of the Department of Philosophy at Kiel University. And um, she edited the book Kunst der Serien, die Serien in Künsten, which roughly translates as Uh, the Art of Serious and Serious in the Arts, and um, which I think offers um, highly interesting in-depth analysis of practices, forms of presentation and reception of series in different art forms and mediums, and um, concerns itself with the laws of seriality. And um, um, I'm really excited to hear more about this. And um, next to her is Martin Nielsen uh, from Sweden. Um, as Alexander always said, um, we screened um, his series We're Different Now just before the panel. Um, I hope lots of you have seen it because we are opening the floor later for discussion and everybody is invited to um, uh, pose questions to the panelists. And um, I think um, uh, We're Different Now, um, which is screening an international competition. Am I right? Yes. Um, it's an intriguing work and we are excited to have you here. And, um, um, we, of course, we'd like to talk about uh, your concept of seriality, your approach to it, and um, um, yeah, getting over to Thomas Moore. Um, also, in the festival, um, we screened two of his works just before the panel uh, The Winged Earth and Gedankenstriche haben wir da oben. And um, this is a different approach of seriality uh, we're seeing, and um, another notion. And um, I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see in comparison how 
Serialty as a, um, as a concept works differently in um, different films or art forms. And um, I'm going over there to Dr. Bernard Leim. Um, Bernard Leim is um, um, a senior editor at the um, NDR network and is um, responsible for series programming, uh, conceptualization, development of series, and I think it's interesting and important um, because I think our first notion of series is always the TV series, the classic form, the narrative TV series. And so it's going to be interesting, I think, to, to contrast the approaches uh, which have developed over decades um, in TV programming to series to uh, other notions of series, of seriality. And uh, last but not least, Stephanie Pleffert from the German Film Museum in Frankfurt. And um, Stephanie is um, currently in the uh, last stages of prepping an exhibition on um, surrealist cinema. And uh, she's done an exhibition on film noir. And she comes from, a, uh, from the viewpoint of a curator. Um, um, many of you probably have experienced curating festival programs or uh, curating exhibitions or um, cur um, assembling books, uh, editing books, etc. So um, this approach of creating a series, um, of attributing sense to a sequence of works, that's another notion of seriality which comes into play, I think, in our discussion. And, um, well, I, since we are in the short film festival, I'd like to start off with a question to the filmmakers. Um, maybe start off with you, Martin, if, you, if you're okay with that. Um, so, um, how did you approach um, your project, and did a concept of serialty play into your artistic decision beforehand, before you started, or uh, was there... Uh, maybe another notion um, or another idea which came before the idea of putting the, um, your films into a serious form. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, is it working? No. No. no really. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, the series. Now, well, the, the background is not, yeah, sometimes it works. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Okay. Um, we had no idea, idea that it was going to be a series when we started the project at all. Um, we, the idea behind it was that uh, I was so tired of have to, you know, plan the film from the beginning and know what you're going to do and then shoot it. Uh, to prepare for, I mean, this is going to be 15 minutes long or 20 minutes long and all that. So we just wanted to film uh, and we didn't want to beforehand know what it would end in. And we shot this film for about four years. <laughs> uh, like we filmed three days and then we had a break for nine months, and then we shot one more day, and then we found a new actor, and we, well, it was like that. And we invented the story along the way. Uh, we had this idea we want to make a long film, the longest film we've ever done. And uh, we realized it's, uh, it was quite difficult to make, we wanted to make a feature 90 minute film. We found it a bit difficult to tell the story. So, um, in the middle of the process, we um, the idea actually came from the National Swedish Television. They asked us to make this series. Because uh, um, they came up with the idea to make some like episodes. And I directly thought it was a brilliant idea, especially I, I really demanded to have like the good, um, you know, to see it uh, once a week, the same channel, the same time, so you could wait one week to see the next. <laughs> it was very tempting to have that opportunity. So we did, and um, 
we have this. I mean, you that have seen it know that there's not so much actually happening in the film, but we still want to make it, try to make it like cliffhangers from one episode to the other, and um, and make that um, when people have to wait one week to see what's happening. There's, uh, you just mentioned it yourself, there's a lot of aspects um, which we came to know from, from seeing TV series. There is uh, always the promise of something to happen, um, of continuation, of the story developing. And I think it's beautiful how it often leads to a dead end. And um, it, um, me and my first... Um, 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 my first idea was I was totally reminded of, of uh, some of the Nouvelle Vague works where uh, the detective story was always uh, um, the uh, modus operandi of uh, Nouvelle Vague directors if they just wanted to show something, you know, just make a detective story, um, take a conspiracy story. Um, and um, you have all those dead herrings which, which lead mm -hmm. nowhere and still you keep people guessing and intrigued. And um, so um, if, we are, if I understand you right, the whole conceptualization of making these episodes and the intertitles and everything, that came uh, later, in a way, uh, after you started shooting and after you were commissioned to make a series, basically. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. <laughs> no, <it's> <laughs> Maybe for the time being, you yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. um, yeah, I, I actually find it quite difficult to talk about what the film is about, and it's uh, much more interesting to hear what other people think it's about. And um, when you have, when you're forced to talk about it, I think it's interesting because I myself think, find new things what it might be about. I mean. It might be about some company having a kickoff for their employees, or it might be terrorists, or I'm not sure myself what it is. And the actors, they were definitely, they had not a clue <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> and that's a good way to work. I mean, this group situation, we have made several films about groups. Uh, groups that are put in a situation. And, uh, and then we see what happens. And uh, I mean, several of these actors, they had no preparations, they had no script, we didn't know them. And uh, so they had to find out on the way also what, what was going on in the series. And I think that's a good way to work. Yeah. Um, uh, talking about grouping and the approach, Thomas More, um, your film um, has a, a totally different approach to, to the idea of series. This is, these are single films uh, which work with certain patterns of repetition, sequences, and um, can you maybe dwell a bit into or explain a bit um, what was your conceptualization or what was your approach? To, to these two films, which we screened, The Winged Earth and Anadabu. Yes, uh, these uh, two pieces are uh, both related to Anadabu, and I started with it, uh, uh, with working with uh, music of Anadabu when I heard uh, a concert for the first time in 2010, I think. <coughs> And uh, I, I didn't know that Anne Darbo made music. She's very famous for her installations, and she has uh, had uh, uh, many shows in, in Hamburg, in, in the Documenta in Kassel. Uh, uh, and uh, I always, always was a fan of her work. And uh, I guess she, she has influenced me heavily, uh, uh, and, and then I, but I had forgotten it. And then uh, I was invited for that uh, concert, uh, and. Uh, I was so impressed by the music, and, and I thought I have to work with it. And uh, I started to chat uh, uh, with uh, uh, 
uh, Mr. Dahl, who, who uh, uh, has recorded the music here at Hamburg. Who's also here. He, 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 he was here. He was here. He just was, was curious how it would be uh, uh, working in Big because it was the first screening on, on a larger scale. So I, I talked with him and, and uh, he said, sure, uh, you have to go in contact with the Anne Darboven Foundation, which is also in Hamburg. And so then uh, uh, I started to work. And initially, uh, uh, my, my work itself is based on step-by-step uh, -step working with the construction method. I'm, I'm, I'm trying a construction method, and I think this works. My first moving piece I started with making films only 2007 was with a uh, very young uh, Dutch composer and when I found this music uh, I started, I, I tried with, with working with it and I put it on uh, existing material. But uh, then I was more intrigued by Bahal Darboven and more intrigued by Bahal Darboven and how she worked and then I came to Hamburg again and uh, uh, I, I saw the circumstances in which she worked and. Uh, so that, that's just quite, quite fascinating stuff and then I think oh, there's an angle which uh, would be interesting for, for me to continue and in some works uh, the uh, connection is very obvious as in the pieces Gedankenstrich uh, uh, because it's the catalogue of her work but within the catalogue here, if you have it in your hand you will see that all, always one third of the page is about another book she used, that's the first book. So I, I, I did that, and uh, in, part, in fact, it's part of a series because Gedankenstrich goes. Uh, uh, I'm going by train from Amsterdam to Mainz, where I'm born, and uh, in another piece, I'm going by boat from Mainz to to Cologne in the direction where I live now. So I, I go on with uh, uh, yeah links, but but uh, the basic thing is uh, that I start with the construction method, and in fact uh, the. Uh, the sequences of, of uh, the first piece and the second piece, in this case, are really completely mirrored. So in the one piece starts horizontal, the other starts uh, uh, vertical direction. And uh, in fact, both uh, ways are uh, a different approach to the material which I use because I don't work with film. I'm, I'm starting with photography, thousands of photographies. And uh, when I start with a horizontal stripe, it's referring to the uh, a contact sheet uh, which uh, used to be uh, to exist and uh, if I start with a vertical stripe it's, it's like like a movie which you had on, on Super 8 so it's uh, all about that and I, I make it much slower than the normal movie uh, uh, to uh, to make clear that it, uh, uh, it's made from separate uh, images and in the end uh, uh, it, it's not so necessary that, that uh, you play both in fact, uh, The Winged Earth is a piece which uh, uh, will not be in use, but uh, 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 Mr. Dahl and I will have uh, the, the utopic idea that we will uh, uh, reproduce the concert he gave once. So I'm, I'm always trying to, to uh, uh, have those music pieces and uh, uh, I, we need a, at least one hour of music because I said it only works after an hour, so I need some pieces, but, but then uh, of course it shouldn't be too boring and uh, so we are still in, in, in an experimental process and it can, can happen that uh, I use the music of one piece again and again in another piece uh, uh, until I'm, I'm ready with the whole project. Well, um, oh, now mine doesn't work, so <laughs> you can't have anything. Um, it works, it works. Yeah, You're not close enough to the microphone. So? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but um, things, um, um, you have a leitmotiv and you have a concept um, which you will probably continue in the, in the coming years. So this is basically core issues of, of doing series in a way. And um, I think from there, I, we're going to take one of the broadest questions, and we saved this for you, uh, <laughs> for Blattler. Um Do you have the microphone? Uh, so, um, s since you're in the um, privileged position, or uh, if it's so privileged that you have um, done so much extensive work on the idea of Sirius, um, I'm going to ask the, the, the broadest possible question, and, and I hope you, that you're willing to, uh, to delve into it. It's, 
what constitutes a series? Um, are there are there any uh, coming from from phenomenology? Uh, what does constitute a series in the arts? That's a difficult question. So when you are interested in series or phenomena, phenomena called series, so you are faced with a, a wide range of different uh, objects and concepts and. Um, my my interest goes always what in this direction what is the characteristic of all these different phenomena um, i would say it's not repetition it's very often that series are constituted by repetitions but not always think about mathematical series think about the musical um, 12 tone scale, um, think about seeing chrono series, series in a museum, for example. Um, so the presentation could at least constitute a series at the end. Um, but one characteristic I find in all the series is at least a kind of paradox. So it constitutes a continuity based on discontinuities. So um, we have always um, several elements and interspaces, and they, they, um, they are in a certain relation. And what interests me mostly is um, what is this relation? But that's a question for, for us, for the viewers, or it's, um, it's part also in the eye of the beholder. So you feel in the gaps, in a way, between? Yeah, or it's a... Um, mm, serial objects are a demand for us as viewers or beholders. And it's another approach, as from the filmers, they make them. They, they are involved in the process of making these objects. So for me, because you ask, um, it's, it's very easy and very basic. Several elements um, related with uh, interspaces. And how the relation is determined, it's another question. But what you can find um, always is also, it's not, sometimes it's, it's uh, easier to approach uh, 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 by negation, what it's not. <coughs> so the relation is not the causal, the causal one. So it's not a relation of um, cause and effect. And that's interesting for, um, especially for theory and philosophy as we've seen since the 19th century until today. I think we're going to come back to this, uh, especially in regard to technical reproduction. Um, I think because we all focused on audiovisual arts here, and um, um, so film and television, and which brings me to um, Bernard Klein. And um, we already talked a bit about um, uh, the the approaches to seriality or working in a series uh, with the two filmmakers. So you come from from a long tradition of, of series, one might say, you yourself, for years, in um, fictional uh, um, series programming and development. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are the demands coming from, from a very pragmatic and uh, also expensive uh, form of production? Um, what are the demands, what is necessary to, um, to make uh, a story into a series, and what are, um, because we now have the, um, I think in, in the audiovisual arts or in commercial audiovisual arts, we have this whole discussion about feature filmmaking versus TV series, um, where there is a shift in the perception of series as an art form, and um, I think this is uh, also intriguing to see this uh, when, when we see uh, your film, which is kind of a play on, on, on this fictional series um, trend, in a way, or it kind of, yeah, it, uh, it nods its head uh, in, that, in that direction. And uh, maybe you can 
give us some insight into what makes um, the, the development of a series so demanding or rewarding in a way? So many questions, but you know. Uh, one. In, let, uh, <laughs> may, may I answer your question in, uh, in describing what I saw when I saw your film, the last film we saw before our panel started? Because, you know, for me it was intriguing and really fascinating that immediately when the film started, I was in the sound of the, the organ. And uh, I, uh, for me it felt like I was, you know, led into a room uh, where I wanted to be. It's a, a, a sound which carried me through the whole film. And then oh, uh, there was this, uh, uh, this sound, a, a kind of basic sound, over which or connected which uh, the variations took place. And uh, so it was, you know, uh, here a kind of meditative uh, mm -hmm. calm, uh, uh, which contrasted the, uh, the, the picture with the more which was more, was more nervous, but the basic feeling was this warm, wonderful uh, sound of the organ. And uh, so it went on and on, and then the end of the film came. For me, it was, you know, in a way, uh, like life is. The, the end was, you know, unexpected, in a sense. You could maybe go on five minutes longer, or seven minutes longer, or whatever. And uh, so it's like death that comes when you don't expect it. And uh, so there you have some signs for me which make it good series. You have uh, this room, a room is created in which I like to be, in which I like to wander around, which I, uh, uh, I have the impression I know it in a sense, so it comes near. And then there are variations of this pattern, of this sound which are uh, maybe there my comparison uh, goes a bit weak but uh, the variations and the narrative tradition from which i come or which i have to work for um, is different but uh, the, the, the 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 basic pattern of the tv series is this combination of um, of uh, some basic patterns with variations and uh, so um, a combination of uh, new things and uh, things you are accustomed to as you are. And uh, I think that, that when you, I mean, when one done then uh, tries to define what a TV series is, and I think we are now in the first steps of our conversation, so if one tries to, 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 to define it, then of course my viewpoint is prob probably very different from your viewpoint, because for me, one must say it very bluntly, a series is basically nothing else in the German television than a means of collecting an audience to a certain time in, a, uh, in, 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 in figures which are, uh, you know, go into the millions, or we are still, you know, in German television, stick to the Big Ten philosophy, which means that we try to collect as many view, uh, viewers as possible to a very expensive uh, program in, uh, uh, in, 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 of course, in prime time or in excess time, time between six and eight, the main series time in German television, or just after eight o'clock. So there are all German, um, um, uh, uh, German companies, TV companies are, of course, they feel obliged to to create uh, a big audiences, uh, to have big audiences for the series program. So, I mean, these are two, two answers uh, to your question, and I think uh, the difficult task for me is to, uh, yeah, to work on this relation between uh, developing new types of series nowadays, of course, uh, the American uh, um, uh, series, uh, the, uh, the talk about the new golden age of television with the with series which are uh, now considered as uh, uh, as you know compared with with the, the great novels of the 19th century or uh, Matt Minor of Mad Men or uh, other figures of the uh, uh, American TV uh, series scene are compared to, uh, to the great novelists uh, like Dickens and, and Balzac and so on and so forth. 
And of course, then, and this is, I think, one of the most important and issues, questions now, what I described was to collect an audience to a certain time. Uh, this is, we can see it now, we can see it quite clearly, this is the old television. Linear and, television. Uh, linear television, uh, where uh, the behavior of the audience and the programs is linked uh, to certain, you know, types of uh, attitudes. Uh, the, the, the audience expects something to a certain time. You can't bring a very complicated uh, uh, TV movie, not, uh, let's say, in the afternoon, but you can uh, uh, transmit it at, at 10 o'clock in the evening, and so on and so forth. I think this, um, this uh, and the target show is always at 8 o'clock, and it's 8 o'clock when the target show uh, goes on. You know, all the thinking which uh, links uh, uh, the everyday behavior of people to the scheduling of TV programs, I think this link is now uh, getting weaker and weaker. Uh, and, 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 then, and then the series will, TV series will change as well, because the TV series, in the tradition of the TV, series, uh, of the, of the TV history, is the art form of television, because in commercial television, it provides uh, the, uh, uh, the advertisers uh, with, uh, with a very stable viewership in which, in the, in the intervals in which to, you can place uh, uh, the commercials. You know, I mean, the, 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 uh, the series comes out of commercial TV to, uh, to, to have always the same audience to, 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 to have a sound basis for your uh, uh, commercials. I think uh, what's really, really interesting what you said is creating a room uh, in the sense with, with the series um, um, or that um, uh, how you compare the film of creating a room where one wants to return to um, as, a, uh, <clears throat> as a spectator, I want to return to this room continuously and um, I think um, when we talk about museum as a room or um, as a place uh, where, where you um, uh, where you constitute a narrative or a series when you, when you work on a certain subject. Um, I think there are demands uh, also of making this uh, room working with expectations um, of visitors and uh, with preconceptions of, of, of the story or of, of an artist. Steffi, what do you think? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course it is. I mean, um, I work as a curator for film-related exhibitions mostly. And uh, which, in my case, does mean that I work with exhibiting films and moving images. And when you ask me to take part in a panel about series, or I, for my first reaction was, I don't work in series. <laughs> I work in a museum, and I work at the crossroads between film programming and art exhibiting, in a way in well, exhibiting film or film moved image, moving, moving images. But when I started thinking about it, I figured that I nonetheless work with seriality in different respects, of course. I do, I always, I have a curatorial concept, including film as a medium. And the way I include those films, sometimes it's films, sometimes it's clips, it, includes compiling them or um, sampling, in a way, filmic material or digital material in, with different aims. Might be a narration to describe to the audience or the viewers certain aspects of filmic production, filmmaking. But just the same, it might be a simple presentation without an idea of a story I have to tell or I am about to tell. Um, so to exhibit a medium that consists of single images in within the limits or limitations of a curatorial concept for me expects to serialize and sometimes to deserialize it. I don't know if that was an answer. Oh, well, I think so, but um, um, I, th I always think when it comes to, to, to doing exhibitions or doing a festival, um, 
programming a section and so on that we uh, deliberately or uh, unconsciously always create series in a way. Um, uh, we have certain uh, preconceptions about an artist, about a uh, subject, and um, this always plays into our selection of artifacts, of, of stories, of uh, which we want to tell. Um, sometimes they, they come naturally, sometimes they're deliberately conceived, um, and I think it's a mixture of both. And I, and I think that it's pretty interesting because, um, uh, um, as Blatter said, uh, it's not about repetition in a way. Um, the series is not about repetition per se. Uh, is that correct? Do I, do I quote you right? <laughs> no, not exactly. It doesn't need to be connected. It doesn't need. It doesn't need. Uh, to be based on repetition. It doesn't need to be. So, um, but um, as you said, um, uh, Mr. Linus, uh, that repetition is uh, in the uh, narrative form of um, uh, of serious storytelling. Repetition is an aspect which is important. Um, you have certain motives, characters, which have to be, uh, which have to continue and have to return to keep the viewer interested. Yeah, yeah. Let's take the normal conventional TV series which you can see in German television and, and take this as an example. I don't say that this is all what you can say about series. There are many more possible uh, developments. Uh, think about what when you when you have, for instance, what you can see with, at the RID between six and eight, or um, later at uh, eight o'clock. Then you have always what you said uh, is promising, prom uh, this promise developing. I, I think that could in discussion between us that in the dramaturgic theory every scene builds up a promise which is fulfilled or which should be fulfilled in one of the next scenes. So at least in the conventional storytelling, TV storytelling, I build up a scene to a certain momentum which creates an uh, expectation with the viewer uh, he, he wants to be what this um, expression of the face for instance, means, and then he will go on uh, to see what the uh, uh, person, the protagonist, has seen at that moment. You uh, had uh, this this uh, this dramaturgic uh, machine of, uh, of 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 creating expectations in the in the classical cliffhanger when you see, let's say, a program like Verboten Liebe or uh, the other uh, daily series in German television, then you can, I think you could create a grammar of the last expressions of a series. You have the ambivalent look, you know, what does he mean? Uh, is he honest? Uh, what does she see? What is she expecting? The faces of shock and horror, of joy and so on and so forth. And these, uh, these uh, uh, expressions in the very formatted way of producing these series, really I think you could create such a kind of grammar of these ex expressions. On the other hand, uh, to, 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 uh, to, to, to keep your uh, viewers uh, going, and they, of course, they, they um, in, in the viewer, um, there is a certain type of knowledge about the series which you continuously build up, so he knows how that or that character will react, because, oh, that's the funny one. That's the more, you know, uh, difficult one. So there are certain types of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of figures in a standard in a standard manner, of course, in the popular uh, programs. And uh, so there is um, the expectation. I will be in my expectation. I will be confirmed. I, 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 I think he will do this and that, and either. He fulfills what I think he will do, or he doesn't. But this is a kind of, 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 of play in my mind, which is going on and on and on and on. I mean, this is a principle which you have in Chris programs as well. I mean, the, the enormous uh, success of Günther Jauch's Chris, I think, 10 years ago, was that he created the multiple choice. Uh, that was not uh, so much the case in German Chris program, programs in the older times, in the 50s. Um, where other types of quiz were very popular. But when you have four alternatives, you can guess yourself too. And so I think the series, uh, the, the, you can say, well, what's, what's the right answer? And there's obviously one answer which is not the right one because it's completely ridiculous. So I have only three answers left. And
and so on and so on. I will only say that these patterns of uh, of, of, of um, a preconception, expectation, and confirmation is con con uh, continuously working in a, in a, in a TV series. I and I think the way to change that, that is a task that's in, in, in the future to, to go to more complex uh, types, to, to more complex types of narratives. And uh, I think it's very interesting because I think there's something in there that we can. Um, Generalize in a way. Um, it's um, that serious to, to recognize a serious. We have to, to see certain patterns, and uh, just to, to to determine this is a serious. There has to be something uh, which returns or which uh, which comes up again. And on the other hand, we are looking for surprises. We want to be surprised, and we want we want a payoff which might go against our expectations. We want um, because. When we only see the same pattern over and over again, we might become bored and we might discontinue from watching. And um, we're not longer uh, eager to anticipate what's going to happen next because we think, okay, this is not going to surprise me anymore. And I think this is something that um, is um, a motive or um, an aspect which is this is interesting also with your film, Martin. Um, that we. We continue to expect something to happen, and I, I was uh, um, I was thrilled till the end. Although I probably knew that not so much is going to happen, so uh, still uh, the patterns were, you know, because um, uh, for me it, it was like um, it, it was it was entertaining for me because I, I recognized certain patterns which you subverted in a way because um, then you had a hard cut or you had a totally uh, absurd. Dialogue, which uh, or absurd in the context in which my expectations were first. So um, you're subverting certain expectations, which comes with the serious, with serious storytelling, and this is rewarding in its own regard uh, for me as a viewer because I, I know serious and I know what to expect. And when this is subverted, this is also entertaining and new for me, and um, it's something that like Tatort Reiniger in a way does sometimes too. Um, playing in the genre um, and subverting the genre at, at certain points and uh, um, taking um, the, the, the three act structure um, um, turn it on its head uh, sometimes. So um, um, I don't know. If, um, we can open the floor for questions at any time, actually. Uh, but um, otherwise, I'd um, ask to continue maybe. Um, um, are there any questions? Right now? Otherwise, we just continue to ask. We we'll continue. Um, yeah. so. <laughs> I think what you said about the expectations and one scene leading to the next, and you expect to find answers and all the questions, that's very, I mean, Automatically, in the, with the episodes, you have all these gaps that you can leave out so much information without making the film totally weird. Um, and I like that. And also, to use disappointment that you think you're going to get answers on questions, and then you don't. And that's uh, so nice to have all these gaps to work with. And um, one thing that was really inspiring to do is is that there's so much old school television how this I mean nowadays you know you don't watch it like that. But it brings like memories of when everyone everything stood still because we were watching Twin Peaks and no one did anything else at that time you knew that. Um, and uh, so it's it feels like some <laughs> old nostalgic thing to play with also. And um, also, that we shot it on film and did it slowly and not so smart in many ways. I mean, we just did what we wanted. But um, it's special to have this episode, to have this. I think it's. I mean, the films that I have made, for me, it's quite normal to have to leave out a lot of information to to force the audience to fill in the gaps. And this is a perfect form suddenly, so, oh, here are the gaps. <laughs> so maybe cinema is uh, to be, uh, to emulate the old school television at some point, when 
uh, the old um, linearity of television disappears and everything is on demand and, uh, um, uh, and not longer in sequence but parallel, um, then maybe cinema can, can take us back um, to, uh, with its own dispositive uh, and to, to, to this realm where we waited one week for the continuation of the story and the final payoff and uh, might be. Yeah, that's an interesting question. We don't have to wait any longer because we have now, since I think two years, this new way of uh, serious consumption where you have a DVD, uh, so three years binge viewing, where of, of this traditional way of waiting week per week uh, is you can have it, you know, like a novel reading to the very end. And so um, I think one thing, I mean, we, we discuss it, we discuss about here is now in a very, you know, the structure, the structure and the gaps and so on. On the other hand, for me, of course, the question of character, which leads you through these, uh, is, is, it's a very important point. And I, I really see in this uh, uh, aspect the, the changes going on now, because since uh, characters, uh, uh, like the characters, for instance, in Six Feet Under or um, uh, Breaking Bad and so on, we we are very traditional in German TV that we uh, still stick to the good character because the good character, the, the leading, the, the good doctor or whatever, uh, as, you know, going around in German television, he is the person who leads the audience through all these uh, 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 developing stories and he is the center point where I as a viewer can put things in order you know it's the main the perspective which uh, which gives me a kind of a clear image of what is going on and that's of course in German uh, German TV very typical that all these characters which are main characters in series are come from the middle ground of society. There's not rich ones, there are not poor ones, but there are doctors, uh, wickers and teachers, you know. And so this is the good middle, the good middle. Everybody in Germany, everybody wants to be in the good middle uh, uh, class, you know, then you are not uh, some of these mean and, uh, and, and, and rich people who want, you know, uh, destroy our economy because they, they go to Lehman or whatever, and they are not the poor hard sphere uh, people who have not enough to live. But, uh, so, I, 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 I think when you look at, uh, at this point, the character point, which brings the story together, then you have at the moment, the most important development in TV series. That's a great point, and also uh, what you just said, that TV series um, used, maybe used to play a part in, um, to, to, to uh, uh, assure the viewer in his own position, um, as we said, but the TV series kind of reflected the, the middle class, of the middle ideal, and where feature filmmaking um, or filmmaking always tended to go to extremes. That, so, uh, so a film um, um, which has no continuation and uh, doesn't need a sequel, I mean, this changed too, uh, in feature filmmaking at least, but uh, you always weren't sure what to expect. Everything could happen because there was no second time around, there was no continuation. And um, I think it's interesting that um, um, when we see your film um, or your work and, and your work, um, there's also, I think, um, um, maybe we can talk about the economic demands when you decide to, to pursue a project. You, you said you're going to pursue this project over a couple of years. So, um, kind of um, uh, brought, bring, bring yourself into a position where you say, okay, I'm going to finish this at some point or continue this to a certain finish. Um, um, and, and I don't know about you, Martin, how, uh, how, um, if you, you're going to return to this or if this is uh, um, a closed subject for you or if you're going to continue to do this, uh, um, to work in these kinds of forms, that would be interesting. Or if you're going to say, no, I'm through with serious and <laughs> seriality. It's tempting to make se uh, the next uh, season. <laughs> you know. I will watch it, definitely. <laughs> Just ask in between, um, has your series been shown as a series or always as the whole film, like all the 37 minutes? This. Uh, <laughs> on television it yes. was once a week. Oh really? 
Really? And everyone exactly. asked me, how, how could you <laughs> possibly make that happen? <laughs> how could you? It was wonderful. It was screened every week um, after Game of Thrones. Oh. <laughs> and it was like, wow, you get to, what kind of audience do you get by mistake like that? <laughs> I think that is a real travel back in television history. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, and now at festivals we have screened it different ways, like two episodes, and they'll talk a little bit, and two episodes. I mean, you can see it, whatever. Yeah. Actually, at one point we wanted to make it with um, no order of the episodes, so to try to edit it to to not decide the order, because we knew that when you you download them all and you watch them, and then if you don't know what order you should watch them, that would be interesting. <laughs> But we decided to do it a little bit more conventional. And uh, uh, Thomas, you already have a, an idea how long um, this process is going to take? Or do you have a, a plan? Or are, you, um, are you just going from, from the next segment to the next segment? Yeah, the problem is that I have an idea about a piece of music. First, first I have the music and then I think uh, like uh, the Requiem of Anna Darwoven is uh, 11 volumes of CDs and it's about 11 hours and uh, some pieces I like more and, and some I like less. Uh, uh, these two pieces are from the 11th volume and uh, it's about half an hour and the aim is to get the half hour together to, to create that uh, 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 concept for now Anna Darwoven uh, uh, would, would have been 70, uh, so perhaps for the 75th uh, 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 anniversary. And uh, we, we, we have the idea of, of, of that concert and, and we already wanted it to do uh, two years ago, but to build a big screen here in, 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 in the Peter Church in, in, in Hamburg, that would be much too expensive. And uh, so I'm, I'm making it piece by piece and my whole, whole procedure of working uh, is very much based in, in uh, the golden age of uh, Dutch uh, art uh, subsidizing because uh, uh, in, in difference to Germany and other countries uh, my work was not funded based on, 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 on works but uh, on uh, being an artist. So when, 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 uh, when, when uh, my, my uh, work of, of uh, when my method and, and my, my way of, of dealing with my work was satisfying to the Dutch uh, Fund of the Arts, uh, it didn't matter uh, uh, what I make uh, as long as I have some recognition somewhere. So it didn't matter So if I have uh, shows or if my work is screened in a festival, uh, it, it didn't matter because the Dutch Fund uh, in fact didn't we look on, on, on what you are doing and they only look, okay, he's doing something and he has something, some recognition. So we give him uh, money for four years to continue his working. So you will find in, in, in all my works uh, 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 as, as a credit to the Dutch Fund of the Arts because they are funding me and they are still funding me. So But, but, but they will, will quit with it and uh, then uh, I have to uh, change my way of working or uh, I, I just do it for fun. And uh, so I never know where the edges were, where, where, where an artist stops because he is not earning any money anymore. So I don't know. So at the moment I just find it very satisfying uh, to continue and uh, uh, especially in my method I uh, can, can start with a project and uh, something is happening in my life like my mother is dying or my father is dying or my partner is very sick. Then I, I stop for a moment and, and I find it very comforting that at some point I just go back to my work and the structure is there, the composition is there, I just can go on with uh, uh, composing my stuff. Well, that's, um, that's very interesting because we talked about the assurance uh, the spectators are gets from the series because it can return to, to certain structures and narratives and motifs and that this can also be assuring for the artist. Um, that's, uh, I think that's a very beautiful notion also. At uh, uh, the, the famous Rijks Museum at the moment in, in Amsterdam they have a big light uh, uh, artwork which says artist therapy and I'm biking there again and again I'm always wondering for whom, for the spectator or for the maker.
That was a very nice example you, you gave us because the series is a pattern of order. It, uh, it makes some order in chaotic, within, chaotic within chaotic things. It structures the world. And the, maybe the most ancient mode of structuring it uh, in a serial uh, mode is, is you find in rituals. And there you have this uh, the repetition. They consist of repetition every um, the whole annual cycle is structured by rituals and um, um, repeats every year again and again. Maybe that's also a um, characteristic of the series that it is, in principle, it's never ending. Yeah. So it gives you some hope, some structure in doing it, but also in watching it. So as I know, a lot of um, research has done in this direction about uh, TV series. When they used to work like that, uh, they collected um, a public at the same time for the same uh, um, for, for the same not, se for, not the season, the same uh, <laughs> the same part of the um, episode. episode, yes. Um, but I'm very interested in this formal aspect of series and in both of your films I was struck in a completely different way. So in your short films um, I was uh, struck that you shifted the attention, my attention, from the content to the form. So at the beginning, I wanted to catch the pictures, to catch the topic of the pictures, but it was it was already too um, too fast to catch them really. And then I I had the impression two procedures crossed my intention um, even more, so the um, acceleration and also the minimalization, also the question of the scale. And I was struck because with these films one gets the um, a perception of form, what is and gives you a aesthetic experience also of form. And that's very special, I think, because normally we are focused on contents. And um, in your film, I was stunned that you said, oh, we invented the film by making it, so step by step, because I thought, hmm, what was the, not, not just the pattern, um, behind, but what was the rule or maybe even the law of the series? Because for me, these episodes uh, look like a experimental setting. And what is at um, stake? So change and identity. And the Experiments seek to, uh, we, oh, it's uh, very well known, experiments seek to provoke a forced uh, experience. So, um, but you have two ways. You can test something with this forced experience, but you also can explore something. And so, on the second glance, I'm no more surprised because you choose this exploring way in, in your kind of experimental setting of your topic within this, or over this uh, episode. Yeah. yeah. I think we are at a very interesting point in our discussion, or in our exploration of, of the, the idea of seriality. And um, 
I'm just looking around if there are any questions around, so otherwise we just continue with, with our discussion, but feel free to intersect at any time, um, post your questions. Um, the, um, I think what, what we have, what, I, what we've talked about and um, what always pops back into my mind is the idea of something, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's an opposition, and I'm not so sure anymore because I thought, okay, we have form, and we have narrative, we have um, the uh, experimentation with motifs, and um, we have the continued narrative of the story. And um, I was wondering, uh, in regards to audiovisual art of the 20th century, um, the, the, the shift in seriality, I mean, nobody has mentioned the name yet, but eventually one has to do with Benjamin and uh, the whole concept of um, technical reproduction of art and uh, of seriality. Um, so do you think that uh, we can uh, still determine this shift um, when you, because you worked through the, um, through the art forms and through the ages and looked at seriality uh, in different uh, phenomena. So uh, do you think that this is still true, this whole notion of um, technical re reproduction, um, erotic art form, non-erotic art, non erotic art, erotic art. Um, does this still hold up in a way, or do we have to change our perception of um, uh, reproduced and uh, reproduced art, it's especially with regard to to our discussion of the series? In a way? You mentioned Walter Benjamin's essay on the work of art in, its, in the age of its mechanical reproduction. It's from the 30s, so we are now in another age. <laughs> Again, um, the me mechanical reproduction has become normal now. At that time, it was very questioned, it was new. And Benjamin stated it in relation he was interested in, in the relation between human perception and um, technology, or in his case with a, a new technique of mechanical reproduction. And I think the erratic work of art and the mechanically reproduced one, they're two poles, so they are not essences or substances. Um, and at that time, he detected in this uh, mechanically reproduced work of art some, a, a special scope, a certain emancipatory potential. So it lives, but his, his whole approach um, is based on this potential. But when this potential is realized in a certain specific way and um, uh, gets normal, has gone normal, so the potential has gone, someone has to seek for a new one in another, maybe uh, in another mode. And I would say, and uh, at the end of his essay, he makes this, uh, um, or he gives us this uh, perspective also that also a um, work of art, uh, a reprodu mechanically reproduced work of art, can turn into an erotic work of I'd art. Second that. I think uh, it's also funny when you, uh, I mean, uh, I think this, the, su the succession is getting quicker. Uh, in our age, because I mean, uh, we have times when uh, when you look at uh, some uh, theories or explorations in the seventies where television was uh, non erotic and now television, as we talked about it, television in the old form, in the linear form, has sort of become erotic, and uh, now video on demand is non erotic or um, other forms of distribution. So we just have to wait, possibly, uh, which uh, will turn erotic next, the internet. I'm, I'm not an expert on Benjamin, I'm an expert on scripts of course of the year, but so far my memory goes, is that uh, one thing in this uh, essay of Benjamin is this, this kind of 
you know, bringing up the audience, uh, creating an audience which it's, it's, it has more expertise and which can, you know, discuss on another level, on, on, the, on a different level about what it just saw in the cinema. And I, one question I really, uh, I'm not, not able to answer that, but I think it's an interesting question. And I think that the development of the new American series, or the new series culture, which is linked to this world of, of, of golden age of television, I mean, the same people who say now golden age of television have, uh, have, have uh, two years ago said uh, television is going down because it's the time of re reality TV. And the time of reality TV and the golden age of uh, television are roughly the same time, you know. So it's, I think, it's, but let's uh, 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 be it that way. Uh, what, what I really wonder is whether these, this new type of series, the, uh, the American series for instance, and the new means of communicating about uh, series are linked together because it's interesting that uh, these 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 um, wonderful series like, for instance, Six Feet Under, they create a kind of forum around them in which people, in a very expert expertise way, communicate about the series. I I think you can't. Just say it's uh, it's you know kind of you know the typical comments on the internet when you look up these uh, pages and the forums which exist around these programs. It's a very interesting discussion going on uh, about the way in which we, for instance, work and what uh, what are our mistakes and and so on and so forth. Uh, we had a, uh, just recently a discussion in. Um, and one of a group of uh, ID um, uh, people responsible for the programs, uh, uh, the colleague from the Austrian uh, television, who said, "Well, I stick to the traditional way. The people sh should not contact with second screens when they see the films I'm responsible for. So it's a kind of idiotic, and uh, I don't, you know, you have to to watch it." So he was defender of the erratic form uh, of art in which you are, in a sense overwhelmed or drawn in and uh, it's a kind of ritual of uh, you are observant all the time there is the point where you will uh, uh, be touched what, by what you see there is no point which you can't see you must change your life and all uh, all that but we are now uh, that, that, that these series for instance create what I just said this this continuous stream of, of, of communicating. And I sometimes, you know, when I watch that, I feel reminded at this uh, essay of Benjamin and say, well, the world of the experts, the audience ex experts has come at, at last. <laughs> and I feel reminded on uh, the hopes which I had when I read this essay in my university times long ago. So that's great. Um, um, control about exhibition of your work, in a way, is also an, a factor, a new form of interactivity, um, which I explored. Um, um, that there's no more certainty of time and place when a work is um, um, perceived. And um, I think this also plays into, um, into your line of work, where you, um, uh, you stick to it, you work in a museum. So, uh, you have people coming in, you have a lot of control uh, basically about the room. I mean, uh, the whole of your work is how you display your work and how you frame your work. And, and as you do when you program a series in a certain lineup um, in an evening, there's a, a certain narrative to the program itself, I think. And, and you do that too. Or when you're in a festival, when your film is playing in a festival, you, I think one always looks at what is playing before my film. Which, which is playing after my film and where I'm placed. But you said we want to change this, this way, you know, in, you start at the end, and then the beginning is in the middle, and then, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting, I think. Yeah, but I think uh, that, that yeah. it might be, you yeah. will reach a point where the viewer can reconstruct the story from, you know, parts of it, uh, and we are now, you know, very much in the traditional three-act structure in, in our popular uh, storytelling. I think it's, it's uh, you can imagine that this, even that, really. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you, you said it yourself, letting loose, in a way, losing, um, literally losing control about the reception and, and also the consumption of your work, in a way. Yeah. 
And um, I think that's an interesting aspect which plays into everybody's line of work basically here. Um, how much control do we have about um, how our work, when our work, where our work is uh, perceived? I think it was a question to you. I'll just take the question. Um, I, I have trouble speaking of my work because in a way, of course, the idea of what I exhibit is mine or the one of my team, but what I work with is finished works by others. And what she said last, the not so much the part of having control. I, I don't have any control on my audience or the people that come to the museum. And in a way, I deliberately don't want to take it. I don't give them a fixed way to pass through the exhibitions. I've never done that. And I always ha have it Mm, lay out it as open as possible so people might find their own way, might get attracted by the several exhibits, the filmic material or the others. And what you just said is funny because, as you said before, I'm working on filmic surrealism or cinematic surrealism on the idea how surrealists perceived film as the perfect medium to express their ideals and what trials they made to realize this ideal form. And um, they had the great love for the cinema particularly because that was the age they grew up with. They were born the same time as film was. And what they loved was early cinema, the anarchic, non, not exactly logical narr narrative films series as well, which fits in well here, the American adventure series, French crime series, they loved watching that. And they had a very special way of perceiving art. They went to the cinema, into one film, went out again, went to the next room, saw a piece of a film they didn't even know which one it was, and went out again. So. The idea was to get charged with as many impressions as possible and then to build an own film within their head, like a cinema in the head. And I think maybe that is what people do when they visit an exhibition as well. They take up as many influences or ideas as possible and then they build their own narrative around it which wasn't really an answer to your question either. <laughs> but it's a nice point. <laughs> so yeah, uh, um, uh, the digital realm, um, um, so when, when it works, uh, which used to be in a cinema or used to be in a linear program, enter uh, uh, the web or any space where, uh, where there is no uh, linearity anymore, and where a different path lead. I mean, a YouTube session, you might say, is also choosing your own path It's removing images, although there's a machine and an algorithm behind which makes uh, certain suggestions based um, on, on certain keywords and so on. But I think what you said, uh, that the audience itself, uh, the reception, um, um, uh, the viewer, is more involved in, 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 uh, in um, commenting and actively uh, participating um, or uh, um, arguing about um, this, the way the narrative should go how this should, and they have the power in a way um, it's, there's, there might be a shift um, which, which is interesting uh, for, for different um, forms of, of uh, serial narration or working in, um, in, uh, in fiction uh, storytelling yeah, and now I'm a bit in the wilderness, you know, but, but about what, what, what uh, yes, uh, you asked the question, I thought back what you said about rituals and that uh, serial uh, structures uh, have a function uh, to prevent us from cha chaotic uh, perception, so to speak, so it's a kind of order. Uh, so it's not, the not just the case that everybody builds his own or her own program in, in her or his head, but that uh, in uh, what we as uh, broadcasters offer them, there must be a certain offer on, off order, not the least. And I think, again, it's not, I, I just can say that this is 
not just structure, but you know, when I uh, think back what I saw when I saw your film, then you know, my first uh, my first uh, associations were you know going to the low country here, uh, down somewhere on the coast, and then you see a church and you go into the church and there is somebody playing the organ, and even if it's dark, and uh, so you feel comfortable at once. Uh, because somebody is there playing the organ. So my association was, and then this uh, took place, what you described, but I felt, you know, that I lost the contact with what I saw, and then I thought, uh, well, then something new emerges. Even I, I lose control, I can't identify, you know, accurately what I'm seeing, but there's a new structure coming up on, on the picture. And uh, so I gained this, uh, room only when I lose control, so to speak, and don't want to identify every bit of what I see. So uh, I think you have, I, in my, at least in my view, you must reach some deeper ritual, uh, deeper meaning, which is uh, shown, for instance, in the rituals and TV series. You have very often families sitting around the table, somebody coming from outside, and so on. You have this defined room. Uh, in the family series, for instance, the common meal plays a very important part where everybody comes to and go, uh, goes from. And, and, and so and I think, um, I, I, you know, the notion that, that, that now we have more uh, the chance that everybody uh, build up his own program does not mean that we are not, you know, bound to s some universalistic, uh, universalistic patterns uh, of, uh, of narration, uh, at least in my opinion, but uh, it's a bit, you know, vague, I know, but... Uh, uh I concur uh, to, uh, to a certain extent that, that we still are um, shaped in our illustration by these patterns, and uh, also when we seem to have new means of assembling meaning or, or arranging images and stories that we still are um, definitely shaped by, by the concepts we, we grew up and we are accustomed to, which give us comfort in a way and which uh, attribute sense to, to the things that we have. So it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's always, I mean, that's the, 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 uh, the dynamic in, in which we work with, with art and then with audiovisual art also, be it as a consumer or be it as an artist, I think, um, how we uh, negotiate, um, uh, I think, our behaviorism when it comes to it, and uh, how we explore new ways of, of uh, working um, and um, of inter interpreting these works. Um, I don't know if The, um, the, uh, the direction of the audience is yeah. okay. okay. To your film, do you do you have a, um, a demographic reaction? <laughs> what do you mean after the television? Yeah, yeah exactly. Because it's after the audience is not really. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's some quite good reactions. Actually, someone in the largest newspaper write the whole page about that it was the strangest thing ever screened on national television, so <laughs> I was really happy about um, And yeah, but not with that kind of reaction. And what about the commissioner of the television? I mean, did they expect uh, to watch this? Or? Yeah, they were really happy. I mean, I usually don't want to listen to commissioners what they think, but this time we actually did that, because, uh, and, and we cleared some unclear parts because they wanted to make it understandable. For example, we had <laughs> some of the actors we changed like during the shooting, just put the same jacket on the person and said, ah, it could be the same character. They didn't like that. They said people might have trouble understanding. So I actually listened to that kind of comments and we so, to me, it's a little bit more conventional than I used to work in that sense. But that was very interesting, or good, to listen, actually, to listen to that kind of comments. And, yeah. 
I learned something from that. I love TV audience because there's so many people watching things by mistake, and, and that's so fantastic. I mean, the only time I watch television, just put it on, and then sometimes you misunderstand what you see, and I, I think that's a good way to see things. I mean, I. I never read the back of a book when I start reading it because it's so boring to know what, it, what I'm supposed to expect or read. I mean, it's so much nice to see a film when you know, I have no idea what it's about, if it's a comedy or not. I mean, it's much better not knowing almost always. I think. Uh, there was another question. Yes, I have a general question concerning the budget of series because uh, this hasn't hasn't been mentioned up to now because I think one of the, the success of the American series is that they have a very huge uh, financial um, budget for, for series in, and that in Germany for instance most of the uh, budget goes into cinema movies and not into series and uh, like HBO in America they have a huge success and I think most of the people who are communicating uh, about series uh, concerns mostly um, very commercial successful series and which are a bit with a very high budget. So what do you think about this? Yeah, yeah completely true. That, that's the main difference between uh, Germany and America and, or, and Great Britain, by the way. Uh, in uh, Germany you have still I'm not quite sure whether that's good or not, but we have still the uh, the tradition of the TV movie. The TV movie, the, well, I think uh, Germany is a country, I, I'm sure, uh, that Germany is a country um, uh, with so many uh, TV movies as no other country in the world, a uh, percentage to the, to the population. Um, the two public broadcasters who uh, you know, when you look in our, uh, at our program schedules, you see TV movies on Monday at ZDF, on uh, Wednesday on ARD, on Thursday on ZDF and ARD, on uh, uh, Sunday, uh, Tatort and uh, the um, <coughs> Escape uh, film, Rosamunde uh, Pilcher at ZDF, and so on and so forth. And this is not typical, for instance, for British television and, of course, for American, because there, this series, the TV series, is uh, the t uh, is the TV art form, so to speak. And uh, the budget of the American series is much higher than, than, than what we usually pay for, uh, for a TV series. I, yeah, I could give you some figures, but it's astonishingly uh, a big uh, 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 gap between uh, uh, the TV series in Germany and, and, and America in financing. Um, whereas a <coughs> movie in Germany is comparatively well funded, comparatively well funded. I think this will change. I'm quite sure that must change in a sense because uh, you know when you when you when you discuss uh, the so-called Danish uh, series uh, wonder, yeah, uh, uh, Borgen, the bridge, and all these uh, program Kommissar and Lund and so on and so forth, uh, they decided at a certain time not to produce TV movies anymore, but uh, to put all their budget into TV series. And so this is a complete change of TV culture uh, in Denmark, which, uh, which is uh, the reason for this uh, wonderful series they have there. So I think that, that, that they, the, the discussion is going on fairly late. I think uh, it should have started uh, much earlier. Um, why shouldn't we uh, do better series? I mean, we, we could do it. And I think, um, I hope. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that would be a panel for itself, uh, talking about the, uh, <clears throat> the problem of uh, German television and feature filmmaking and the overlapping interests of television and, and feature filmmaking and the reason why the series might be a bit underdeveloped historically in, in German, uh, German programming. And um, the Danish have also a quite, uh, quite vibrant film industry, so they, 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 they manage to do both. They, they do quality television, you would say, and uh, they uh, have a successful national cinema. Um, but the economic question uh, which, which is in there also, where, where do I place my story? Where, where can I 
Um, where do I work? You, you, you had uh, the chance you were commissioned by um, Swedish television to, to do this. Um, you, you are in the process of developing new series for, for a network. Um, you work in a completely different form. You, um, you're an artist, you are commissioned to do your work without uh, being uh, regulated in the way where, uh, where your outlet is, um, so, so, so to speak. And uh, you, of course, yeah, you work with other people's works, but, <laughs> um, but still, you, you have to, 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 to organize um, the space, um, and you have to uh, provide the, the proper framing for, um, for the works. And um, I don't know, for this new festival, maybe, um, but um, when you see these different um, forms of, of working in serious series and seriality, um, do you think there's 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 a, a new pattern there um, in regards to our technical technological state, uh, the modes of production, um, how we uh, maybe uh, a state of seriality we're in right now? Difficult to say. I would. Answer referring to uh, Benjamin, um, it needs to find or to detect the erotic pole and uh, the other one um, always again because it, it moves, it can shift, and there are rising new technologies we have to deal with. So the uh, the television series is um, an elder, uh, an elder form than the, the um, internet D or the DVD series we know from uh, the states. Um, so it's we are shifting always, and I think it's important to identify where is which of the poles, because we we can't be sure, we can't have a rest, we can't take. This uh, the TV series, uh, for example, to fix it as this uh, contemporary medium where we find where we have the potential for granted. So everything remains in motion, and relation relations tend to shift. And um, are there any more questions? So I don't know what the time. I don't know what you mean. Do we still have time? Okay. So yeah, we still have ten minutes. So anyone feel up to to contribute to the discussion? Yes. I have a, a question to, to Thomas. Um, we invited you to this panel um, with the subject seriality, but and because we think uh, we. we discovered lots of serial elements in your films, but do you think of serial, um, of, of, of seriality when, when you make it, when you make your works, or is it for you a topic which doesn't really occur in your practical work? No, it's a, it's, it's, it's a very important topic for me. Uh, uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm not always working, I'm a consumer as well, and uh, one kind of series is not really mentioned uh, often here, but is in fact the majority of, of programs on the Dutch TV. It's like uh, uh, MasterChef uh, New Zealand, MasterChef Australia, MasterChef USA, MasterChef Holland, MasterChef this. Uh, and most of the people don't watch it anymore on the TV, but they will, will uh, watch uh, in the weekend uh, five or six episodes. So I, I know quite well structures of, of, of formats and uh, I always know and, and I, I consider that in every piece I need an opening, I need an end and uh, uh, I, I have to connect it uh, and I try to translate that in a, a, a formal language. So I, I just have developed my own language with, with my own words and own metaphors and uh, but, but still, uh, I, I know very well what is around. And I, uh, uh, you had the questions, if, it, uh, if we think about the context where our work is shown, 
I really don't mind because I know the context. There are two possibilities for my work. One is that the internet is my own own page, and there I have some influence. I've quit to put uh, work on, on uh, uh, YouTube because I don't like, in the end, the suggestions. I don't want YouTube to make suggestions, but uh, uh, my first Haneda Bogen uh, uh, piece is, in fact, my most successful in terms of, of viewings. In the internet, it's on YouTube, but I have no clue what people watch there. And what I like with uh, 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 short film festivals is the surprise. There's something before me and there's something behind me. And the viewer will be surprised anyway, either by my piece or what's behind or other way around. And I think this is really what, what I appreciate a lot uh, uh, on, on festivals, that I'm going in there, I have the summary, that's all I know and, and, and that does not say much. And then I'm sitting there, and then I have one and a half hour of, of surprises. I have a question to you too, because when I saw the film, um, of course the music is the very, very strong part, and what the visual frames do is more unveiling the principles of cinema in a way. But when you said you don't make films, that was about your first statement, if I got you right. But you would put or montage in a way together photographs. Could you imagine presenting your films in different ways? In, you said probably you were thinking of concerts with screenings. But when I saw it and I saw all the, the frames that were stronger marked than the little ones, could you imagine it having it installed, for example, on monitors or in a gallery? Would that, I just wondered when I saw it because I had a discussion with a friend of mine, we saw, we saw it together and then she said, well, what kind of work is that? And I was immediately answering, well, the film is, and I think that's the discrepancy. It is in between artwork or film. Yeah, in fact, nowadays you would say uh, 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 that I'm making films, but, but uh, uh, I, I, I started quite some time ago and I started with uh, uh, Super 8 which was, of, of course, very different. And, and then later I switched to something completely different. And, and uh, uh, on the Art, Art, Art Academy, I, I was not busy with film, but uh, I started uh, uh, with paintings and uh, drawings. And I uh, uh, thought it would be fun to translate the process of, of uh, painting and uh, drawing into video. And uh, it was a very limited form of, of, of video uh, because it's in, in the 80s. So it was very limited and what you could do, in fact, my first videos I, I made there were open reel. So I, I always have been very much involved in, in uh, uh, how you make video, but not in how you make film. And, and still in my mind, that's a completely different thing. The only thing which I really took over from, from filmmaking is the fact that you have really uh, uh, frames and, and uh, uh, from, from the beginning that you started to work with video that was invisible because you only have that tape and you don't know where is what and only the uh, uh, editing programs made it possible again to see uh, uh, the images. So that's, that's why I don't consider myself as a filmmaker because I don't work with film material neither do I work with, with uh, video material. And uh, the other thing is, uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, when I worked with video, you had a, a, a foundation in Holland uh, called Monte Video, uh, which was representing most of the video artists. And uh, they had a strategy uh, uh, to uh, make us generate income. And, 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 and the idea was, uh, you have to make installations. So. I made installations. Uh, writing uh, artworks. I made installations. <laughs> so that, that was how you would earn money. But at some point, uh, the whole situation on the, on the art market changed. And uh, then they said, Thomas, and, and then at that moment, I just had uh, uh, developed the really uh, uh, the moment by moment thing, which I'm doing now. In the beginning, I made tapes of one hour, and they would flow constantly, slowly. Uh, like you, uh, for an audience which comes into a museum room and then it looks for a moment like a, a painting and then they walk away again, go to the next video installation uh, where they see 
for a moment, then they walk further, and uh, most of the people never will see the full video, and it would be impossible. But at some point, I, uh, uh, with a new computer, I found the possibility to make more changes and to produce more frames than I did before. And uh, so I have the possibility to make films. And uh, then uh, the same institution uh, had changed the policy and they said, Thomas, would you consider to make films? We can better promote films than installations at the moment. And uh, yeah, I, 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 liked, I liked the moment of being in, 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 a, in a cinema in the dark room and uh, my first uh, works in that technique were without sound, without music, and uh, my, my colleagues would make very noisy things, and uh, I always liked the surprise of no sound, silence in the room, and, and, and the tension of, of, of the people. So, any more questions? Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank everyone on the panel. Oh, any final statements on the panel in, in any regard? <laughs> Everybody's good? <laughs> um, but I'd th like to thank everyone who, who took part in the panel. I'd like to thank everyone who, who sits through with us. And I think, um, yeah, um, the subject is not closed, most definitely not. It will probably continue. Um, and um, yes, um, um, I took a lot of it uh, for myself, and uh, you did too, so thanks everyone. <laughs>